So, gears, they're pretty awesome things. I mean, they make things move, and of course when things move, they come alive, and watching whole sets of gears spinning is pretty cool. But it's not only that, I mean, their job is to move power from point A to point B, and even bend it round corners. But beyond that, of course, people are captured by gears. So much so, you find people making table lamps of old gearboxes, and they look pretty cool in a kind of steampunk sort of way, and of course steampunk has a ton of gears in it, or it wouldn't be steampunk. Now there are a whole range of gears, but I want to focus on what I think are the, the three basic gears, and this would be the spur gear, which is the straight up and down gear, the helical gear, and something called the double helical gear. Now to make these gears, actually the spur gear is pretty easy. Most 3D programs have a spur gear generator, and in Tinkercad you just go to shapes, metric gear, and pull yourself a spur gear onto your work plane. Helical gears can be a little bit more complicated, but again, they can be produced in any 3D program, and I've done a video on how to make helical gears in Tinkercad. A double helical gear, well that's just a single helical gear, chopped in half, flipped around and joined up so it makes a chevron. Now, although you can make these, they can be a little bit tedious. And the other option, of course, is to use something like a gear generator, of which there's quite a few. But the best one I would say, or at least the one I find really usable, is this one. It's really simple, it's free to use, and when you download it, you can get it in SDL or DXF. And all you actually do is enter the parameters of the gear in terms of its modulus and number of teeth. That'll get you a gear really, really easily. So like everything, there are pros and cons. Spur gears are efficient, reliable, compact, and they're cheap to make, meaning you find them absolutely everywhere, but they are noisy and they're not as strong as other kinds of gears and they're limited in their distance from the centre to the edge so they have severe limitations. Helical gears on the other hand are much smoother and quieter and they can handle higher torques. They have a curious property that if you set the angle of the tooth at 45 degrees then you can use them in pretty much the same way as bevel gears because bevel gears have other advantages but we won't go into that now. The, on the cons list, they require pretty precise alignment and they are very expensive to make and they can be prone to wear if not aligned properly. The bone of double helix gears cancel out one of the major things about helical gears because helical gears are on an angle and so they thrust and they're mostly used with thrust bearings along the axle. Herringbone gears balance out this thrust. They're also smooth and quiet in operation, and the big issue with them is they're devilishly complex to make and so stupidly expensive. Although they are good for compact gearboxes, you actually don't find them that very much. Because we're about to 3D print, and in 3D printing, that really isn't an issue. It costs the same to print a spur gear as it does to print a double helical gear. The other thing that's kind of cool is you can combine the gears because these gears, remember, come in the external normal arrangement and an internal arrangement where we're used to seeing them in things like planetary gearboxes. Now, of course, there are a ton of other gears, as I'm sure folks are going to point out. You've got rack and pinion, you've got bevel gears, you've got uh, cycloidal gears, all kinds of gears. We're just kind of focusing on those three. And what I want to do is use those three in an interesting way. So I came across this on Thingiverse, which I thought was pretty cool, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do, so I redrew the whole thing because there's quite a few changes I want to make to it. The first thing, of course, is the stand, which is made out of these three components, this arm, this arm, and a base. This arm goes into the base that way and gets glued in there. And this arm goes into that hole in the base like that and gets shoved down and glued in. The next thing that I wanted to do was that outer ring, because remember I want to show all those three gears, and I created this. And this is kind of like a planetary gear arrangement, because it looks much more like a bearing, and that's kind of cool. Now it's printed in place because the chevrons are set at 30 degrees, and they hold everything in place, but if I spin it, 
it actually makes a pretty good bearing. So this one I'm going to put up as a separate file that is a print in place planetary bearing using herringbone or double helix gears if anybody wants to play with that as a bearing because I thought it was really cool and it uses our herringbone gears and shows what herringbone gears can do. It's locked them in place and so we can pick fairly tight tolerances because on these print in place bearings what you often find is that the rollers they put in there are twist and they twist and make it difficult to use. This one of course because it's a herringbone it can't twist and it won't drop out so I thought it was really cool. The other thing I want to do with this is put a helical gear around the outside. So I'll put a helical gear around the outside and that, oops, that will slot onto the framework like that. I also printed this. This is a combination gear. It's a spur gear on the outside, but a herringbone ring gear on the inside, and that'll be the central ring. Now, in the file, this is one whole ring. I didn't split it in the file. What I did was split it in the slicer, because I'm using an Orca slicer variant, and you can just split it and add little pegs to it to join it back together, because that does need to be able to be split. So the reason this is split is because it has to fit through this. This is the same as this, but I put a herringbone gear around the outside. And this has to go on like that. Sorry. There we go. Go on like that and be glued together. So when you've done that, put it to side for a second. Now on the frame, we've got this, which is a normal spur gear, and you'll notice it's got a little indentation there and a square end. That goes in there like that. And then there's a clip that fits on the end to hold it in that indentation to hold it to the frame. The clip just goes in. There's a handle with a square lug and the handle goes on because that's the bit that we're going to turn. Now when we've done that, we've got again in black, this is our helical gear. And the helical gear goes on that peg there. And again, there's a black clip that clips on the button to hold it in place. There we go. Now what we've got to do is feed this on. The spur gear obviously engages with the spur gear and the helical side engages with the helical side and that needs to be held out of the way while you twiddle it around to get it to fit. And when you've done that, you twiddle that up round there, it engages with this helical gear, a spot of glue on there and you're ready to give it a go once that's dried. So there it is all put together. Now remember I mentioned the helical gears exhibit thrust in that direction? Well, I forgot about that, so it actually thrusts the ring out. It needs a, a guide on here to stop that ring being thrust out and maybe the same here and maybe bring this round a bit more. But let's give it a go. <laughs> there we go. So the spur gear drives that in the same plane. This helical gear is driven by that. It drives that helical gear again in the same plane. Because it's 45 degrees, we can twist it through as we would do with a bevel gear. And then we drive these double helix or herringbone gears as a bearing through this outer helical gear that's on the outside of the ring. So I'll probably add those bits to it to stabilise it, but I'll put this up on Thingiverse as is, should somebody want to play around with this. And of course the whole idea is just to be, have fun with gears, because we are 3D printing. When it comes to 3D printing, we don't have the same uh, kind of constraints on us that the manufacturer has. In particular, the herringbone or um, double helix gears. They've been really badly explored because they're so expensive to make and they're actually pretty awesome. Citroen installed one of these as a bevel gear in 1927 in a uh, water turbine and generator and it continued as decommissioned in 2011 and it was flawless in its operation. So using herringbone gears as bevel gears is something that is well worth exploring, plus a whole host of other things. Anyway, this is a little model that shows some of the aspects of those three basic gears and some of the orientations we can use it in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.